What's up, guys? It's Brandon Flash. Today, you're joining me at a Tesla supercharger. Don't mind my terrible parking job. And we're gonna be testing some third-party Tesla to CCS adapters on my F-150 Lightning and talking about why some of them are downright dangerous. As I mentioned, we're gonna be testing some adapters today. I have seven different adapters that go from NAX or Tesla supercharger plug to CCS, which is what my F-150 Lightning has, as well as many other vehicles. And right now, a very hot topic as more and more vehicles get access to the Tesla supercharger network. So whether you have a Lightning, um, a Blazer, a Silverado, a Volvo, a Polestar, um, a Mercedes, you name it, any of the vehicles that Tesla and that automaker have come to an agreement uh, to allow supercharger access for, you'll need an adapter. Some of those manufacturers are providing adapters to their owners, um, and some are requiring them to be purchased from them, um, but some of them are being pretty slow on their rollout, which is leading a lot of people to purchase third-party adapters. And if you're anything like me or like a lot of people, uh, when you need to buy something, you just go look on Amazon, you buy whatever has decent reviews at a reasonable price, and you assume that it's going to be pretty decent, and usually that works pretty well. However, I've ordered some of the top-selling and best-rated uh, adapters on Amazon, and some of them are downright terrifying that they're being sold because they are so dangerous, and I'm going to show you why. And then I'll also show you some of the adapters that you should consider and that I would consider to be safe and that I would recommend that you use. So let's get into it. I'll talk about what makes an adapter safe versus dangerous, and then I'll give you some examples and we'll test them out. So let's talk about the adapters that we have here. So we have A to Z, their Typhoon Pro. That one I've talked about before. Uh, that is one of the ones I'll recommend, so we'll talk about that in a moment and why. You can see that here. And I do have a referral link down below for that. So. This one has a single latch for both CCS and NAX, uh, and I think is a good user experience. This one's a relatively new one to me. This is the Ford Electron co-developed adapter. Um, I haven't really used this one a ton, but this one seems pretty solid so far. Here we have the normal Electron adapter. Uh, I forgot what they call it, but it's the Electron adapter. That's just the normal one. This one's a little bit older production. I hear they have improved things a bit. Uh, since I received this one, but we'll talk about that one. And then here we have a BMKCT, that's literally the brand, adapter. Uh, this one, I did put some notes on each one of these just so that I can re remember because I did some kind of bench testing on them. Um, Appearance-wise, seems fine. You've got the label up there. It has a very strange latch that you actually like spin it to lock it, we'll talk about that in a moment, but uh, questionable at best. Oh, how could I forget? This is the OG adapter. This is the um, Tesla manufactured adapter that Rivian and Ford were distributing initially. So this is from Tesla, officially by Tesla, uh, NAX to CCS. It has this little awkward thumb latch, but that's a manufacturer endorsed one. Here we have Yo Meal, I think is uh, what they're calling it, is the name of the company. Y-O-M-I-L-E. Again, I have some notes on each one of these. So this one just doesn't have a latch on the next side, which is terrifying. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. And here we have a Quayle, I think is how you pronounce it, um, if they actually intended to be pronounced. This one does have a latch on the next side. Um, yeah, it's a strange looking adapter, but we'll talk about that one in a moment. So what makes a safe adapter? Well, there are a few basics here. And if you have an understanding of the CCS protocol, you'll understand that on the top of a CCS or J1772 handle, you have the latch on the top. And this latch has a micro switch. That's called the S3 button. Um, and when you press this, that triggers an emergency stop on the charging station and in some cases on the EV, um, basically saying it's about to be unplugged, kill the charging session immediately. And 
normally there's an interlock onto this latch so you can't actually press it some vehicles have a bit of tolerance there so you can actually press it but that's not intended to be used that way you should also have a latch on the knack side and there's kind of two different approaches to this or you could do both that you can have an interlock pin like this one so see how it has the pin between the dc pins there so that when you plug it into the port of the vehicle actually pushes in and prevents you from pressing down on the NAX latch. So that's a physical interlock that prevents the NAX handle from being removed from the adapter. And then you can also have that there's a micro switch on here. So that way, if you do press the latch, because if it's not interlocked, so a different adapter like the original Electron that does not have the interlock pin, that way, if you press the NAX latch, it also triggers an emergency stop and immediately kills the charging session. So that way, if you press the latch, which makes it so that you can remove it, it's immediately stopped. And that way there's not any arc flash or potential arc flash. There's also the Electron adapter, or sorry, not Electron, A to Z adapter. So this one has two latches in one. So it has the CCS latch and it somewhat inherently has an interlock onto the NAX latch because if it, the vehicle is operating as it should and has an interlock pin onto the CCS latch, then you actually wouldn't be able to press this down to the second stage. So this is kind of a two-stage button here. So if you press it initially, it just opens this CCS side, but then if you push it down all the way, it opens the NAC side. Um, so basically if the vehicle is interlocked until the vehicle releases the interlock onto the latch, then you can't release the NAC side. So that functions that way as well. And then we get to the very questionable adapters. So let's talk about the price of these quick. All of these were between $100 and $130. So this um, BMKCT adapter, this one was $99 when I purchased it. And we have some glaring issues here. So this one, the top latch does work. However, it does not work how the standard specifies it to. So it will just interrupt both the proximity pilot and the control pilot, um, which is not how it's intended to be used. And it also will not change the resistance on um, the pilot, which is not how that's intended to be used. So the S3 latch does function. It will kill your charging session just by interrupting, which is not proper, but I guess does work. Um, this latch also seems very flimsy, just the way it's designed. And then there's a latch on the bottom which is very janky so you can see here you press this down and it releases the latch there it also doesn't seem to fully release so i'll have to test that on an actual plug i haven't actually plugged any of these in because there's such glaring issues i'm not sure i even want to use them um but to lock this latch you spin this little dial which is just an absolutely insane method of latching and then even if you release this also there's nothing stopping you from actually pressing this there's no button or anything um and it's it's just terrifying this is a terrible adapter it's it's compact i'll give it that but uh i cannot recommend this adapter it also feels really cheap um yeah not recommended at all here we have glaring issues so the s3 latch on the top the ccs latch works properly that's pretty basic i would hope that works this latch also feels kind of cheap but whatever this one is the yomiel adapter this one was um 130 dollars so this is actually the most expensive of the amazon adapters and this one also has no latch on the next side which if you've been listening at all in these videos you would understand why that's so important because you could have this charging on your vehicle and then trip on it, just yank it out, a kid pull it out, and you're dependent on the pin lengths being short enough that it disconnects the con communication pins before it disconnects the DC pins and that it reacts fast enough to not have arc flash. So in theory, the way that the connector is designed, this should be safe. However, you don't want to depend on those safety measures when there's no actual safety measures of having a proper latch or shutdown button. And then here we have another adapter. This is the Quayle adapter. 
And this one, again, pretty bad. The S3 does work, so the CCS latch also feels kind of questionable. Also is encouraging not great use to the unlock there. Um, you're not intended to use that to stop charging. I guess you do use it to remove it from the vehicle, but uh, not great. This NAX latch has no switch on it, so you can just open that and then hot unplug it. There may as well basically not be a latch there. I guess it's better than nothing. Um, but yeah, no interlock or anything, nothing on this latch. <sighs> I, I don't understand how these companies can make such blatantly dangerous products uh, and decide to sell them. This one was $120. So here we have the adapters that I do recommend. So the A to Z, the Ford Electron, or sorry, the Ford Electron right here, the Tesla adapter if you have it, though I do think this one is pretty awkward to use. And then here we have the Electron non-Ford adapter, which seems fine as well. Um, I will have links for all of these down below. I will have links to avoid these ones down below. Um, and let me just show you how well the A to Z one works. So let's go over here. My lightning has plug and charge enabled. Just like that. So what's nice about not having an interlock pin between the DC pins is that you can actually do this one handed and that you can actually put the adapter onto the vehicle before plugging in the supercharger. Whereas if you have an interlock pin, it actually will stop you from being able to do this. So there we're communicating. It'll go blue in just a moment here. And there, now we have plug and charge authenticated and we should be charging. So let's take a look. Either already charging or charging in just a second. And we'll go to fast charging here once it's charging. There we go, contactors, and we are charging so doesn't show charging speed unfortunately um it'll show it in the ford pass app but we'll be getting full speed um but like i said it's nice that you can put it in before having to put the handle on whereas with the ones with the interlock pin so the ford or the tesla adapter so this one see how it has the interlock pin there or the ford adapter how it has the interlock pin here you're actually forced to connect the tesla supercharger cable first and then put the whole assembly into the car, which I think is not ideal. I don't like that user experience personally. I like the flexibility of the order uh, and being able to put it under the vehicle first and then plug in the cable if I so choose. So A to Z is my pick for favorite adapter personally, mostly based on user experience. However, from a safety perspective, you really can't go wrong with A to Z, the Ford uh, official adapter, the Tesla adapter, if you have one of those, though you can't actually buy one of those. And then the Electron one seemed fun as well. Anyway, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Uh, if you did and you are buying an adapter, I have affiliate links down below, both for the ones to buy and the ones not to buy. Um, just that way you can see them and take a closer look if you wish. Uh, if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for watching.